All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> All right, we hope you can hear us. Sorry for coming rather late. Uh, we have problem um, with our technical uh, stuff. So I want to welcome you once again to day 28 of our prayer and fasting. And um, we want to believe that God has been blessing you all this while. Uh, by the grace of God, we are closer than, than we started. Uh, if you've not joined the fast, please, uh, you can still join. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So by the grace of God, from today till Sunday, we'll be praying for families. We'll be praying for families. And today... Uh, specifically, before we even go into a prayer, let's just begin to worship God. Lead us in worship and let's begin to praise. Let's begin to worship God and give Him all the glory because He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. You bless your name.
Let's begin to give glory to God. Let's give him all the honor. Let's give him all the adoration. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be glorified. There's none like him. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. We bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We exalt your name, we glorify your name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. We glorify your name. We exalt your name. We honor your name. We say you are good. You are great. You are, you are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our marriages. Thank you for your peace that reigns in our lives. In our, in, our, in our marriages, in our home, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lebra da ja gabra na gabra dozo blekete. Ligo jabara de gebo namana mane zu galabados le bre de gebro dos obre que te ligre namana zu zablados rada da baraka to go pro do vos obre que te legado so baka namana no jale que te zebredes rago do pro do de predito raga da barra namana langa de zagalabado jale vados thank you lord thank you lord Let's commit today to God's hand and Father, have your way. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, have your way. In the name of Jesus, Father, have your way, 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 Lord, have your way, 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 Le Koto Zobre get Dele Brados. Rabaka Baba Bana Mano Zalero Jibleke pronounce Have your way Lord, have your way Lord, have your way Lord, have your way Lord, take your place. Take your place, 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 do that which only you can do, even in our lives, who come Radozo Breketeli Radoja Rabanados, Ramama Manamano, Zoblegabo Rabagados, Rekete Gebegetebado, Zubra Divo Rodosh, Rekete Gebo, Zubra Dozo Brekete, have your way, 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 have your way. Have your way, 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 Malega de Gabona Manamanos, Libra da Barada Gabora Bacate, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the adoration. We say thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. For our homes, we thank you. We thank, thank you for Jesus. the weekend. Thank you, we Lord. thank you for the new week. Thank we you, thank you for how you have been helping us. Thank we you, say Jesus. be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Over our families, our marriages and homes, we thank you. Over thank our fathers, you. our mothers, our children, our grandparents, we thank you for what you are doing in our lives as families. Father, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we pray that your spirit take over in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank Glory you, be to your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. We want to welcome you once again. Sorry for the uh, the technical um, you know, problems we are having. It's just a challenge. We thank God we are back online. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. So to, today, uh, like I said, for the next six days, we'll be talking about, uh, talking and praying about marriages and families. And uh, by the grace of God, we want to talk about, uh, pray about singleness. The, um, the how, how do we maximize our singleness? Hallelujah. As we know that um, when we talk about marriage, marriage is the, they say, is the smallest unit of the society. They say marriage is the smallest unit of the society, but it's not totally correct because even marriage is made up of, uh, uh, of, of two people. So individuals, the correct thing would be individuals are the smallest unit of a marriage because we say that the, the man, the husband is a single unit, the wife is a single unit. And like the scripture says that, the, that one will we, uh, one plus one is, is, is equal to one, not half plus, uh, plus half. So the man is a single unit, 
the wife is also a single unit. So uh, the foundation for every great marriage is a great singleness. Yes. So great singleness, if you have two great singles coming together, they will make a great marriage. Two great single people coming together is what makes a great marriage. If you have one great single and another bad single coming together, they will still have the worst of, of, you know, of marriage. So for us to have the foundation, what we we'll call the foundation for a great home, a great marriage, then we have to consider the foundation. And that foundation will be the man and the woman. The, as, as a single unit, the the the, sing, the 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 man, the husband, as a single unit, and the wife as a single unit, and and the thing is that they still don't lose that singleness even when they come to marriage. So the quality of our singleness is what determines the qualities of our marriage. The quality of our singleness is what determines the the quality the quality of our marriage. So if you have a quality single life. You have a quality marriage, marriage. Life. a marriage life. Thank you. If you have a quality single life, you have a quality marriage married life. So, if we want to have a, a quality married life, it's not enough to focus on the marriage. It's not enough to focus on the wedding. The most important thing is to focus on the single, single life. Hallelujah. So. And that's why we want to start by, by looking at how do we maximize our single life. Because as singles, we want to get married. We just want to get married. Oh, marriage is sweet. Whether it's bad, you just want to go into it. For, for I don't know why we rush into marriage, but I think until you get into it, then you'll be wondering, why did I, why did I, <laughs> why was I rushing into it? Hallelujah. But if anybody tells you you are rushing into it, you say, no, 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 I'm not rushing. You have all the faith. But when you get into it, you say, why am I rushing? <laughs> and not that it's bad, but that you, you could have prepared better. So when you focus on your singleness, then you are indirectly focusing on your marriage. Hallelujah. So, thank God I have my other single fellow here. Uh, she's a single woman. I'm a single man. Uh, we are both singly married. <laughs> if there's any English like that. Hallelujah. So, and I, I can tell you that one of the reasons why our marriage is still working is because we are still single. We are still single. She is single. I am single. I'm still working uh, on myself. She's still working on herself. I think one of the, one of the problems is that we try to work on the marriage. And not on ourselves. And not on ourselves. And we forget that the marriage is made up of oh. ourselves. We are, we are the one that makes up the marriage. So we want to make work on the marriage while we are not working on ourselves. So the best way to work on the marriage is to work on ourselves. That's very profound. I think that's very profound. The best way to work on your marriage to work on yourself. is to work on yourself as a man and as a woman. Hallelujah. Amen. So... That's why we say we are focusing on singleness. So how do we maximize our singleness to help us also maximize our marriage? Let, let me start from let me start from this. Let me start. Let me start, start with. Should I start with or you start? Are you starting? Okay. All right. I, I I just want to see what are the things that we should get right first as singles. I know that many people are watching us who are singles and some who are married. Uh, but um, I think one of the things we need to learn is also how to put our children through um, when it comes to marriage. So as married couple, you will benefit from what we are sharing and you will also benefit as a single uh, person. So if you are not married, it's great. If you are married, it's great because like we said, we never stop being single. Hallelujah. So I think what are the things we must get first? What, what are the things we must acquire, not in material possession, but what are, the, what are the things we must become, we must have before we even talk about venturing into marriage? Which things also will help us indirectly in marriage? So I think the first one I will want to talk about is that we must we must get God first. 
you must have God first. I think God must be the first thing you must have before you talk about getting married. And not just like you, are just, you just go to church. I mean, you must have a relationship, have, have a relationship with God. Because that's, number one, that's how you, you get to know who, you're, who God is leading you to, to marry. And like we all know, many people who have never had God's voice, when it's time for them to marry, <laughs> they want to hear God's voice. You've never, God has never directed you to which career you are to do. God has never led you to which school you are, you are supposed to attend. God has never led you to which house you are supposed to take. God has never led you to which job you are supposed to take. How do you think God is now going to lead you on to marry. who to marry? Definitely is going to lead you, but you are not going to know he's leading you. Because you've never been acknowledging him in all your dealings. So, I think the first thing we must get is God. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Why, why do you think is, that's the first thing we must get? Um, I think that because if we don't know God, we can't know ourselves. And um, I think the next thing would be ourselves and finding out our purpose. And there's just no way you can find out what you're here for if you don't know who made you and if you don't know why they made you so the reason why god is most important in the whole equation of marriage and even in single life is because god is the one who can tell you why you were created everybody was created for a purpose you're not just an accident you're not just a random person um greatness is not just for a few people everybody was created to be great Everybody was created with a great purpose. So for you to know that purpose, you need to meet your manufacturer and that's God. So that's why I think that God is important because we need to know him before we know us. Yeah, I think another, another profound thing when I was, you know, when I was just going through the scripture this morning of why we need to know God is because most of the, the most es- ense- essential attitudes or characters that we need in marriage are developed during our work with God. I think I think that most of our most of the, the most important and essential um, attitudes, characters, characters that we need for life. For life to, form, to relate with your spouse, yes. to relate children. with your in-laws, to relate with your uh, children, to relate with others. I think most of those things are are formed during our work with God. So if you don't have a, a, a history of a work with God, relationship with God, you, you are going to have a hard time, you know, coping with marriage. And why did I say that? I, you know, God was just relating with me uh, the, um, the example of Isaac. One of the things that, that um, Abraham was supposed to, was, was able to, you know, give Isaac was relationship with God. He saw his father relating, you know, to God. He saw his father walk with God. And because of that, he also walked with God. And his walking with God, you know, was able to pass to him some essential attitudes and characters that, you know, he needed. One of them is faith. Faith. Imagine when Abraham had to go and sacrifice him. Oh wow! To, yes, you know, the boy must have seen you know, he, he saw the faith of the father. That also helped him to walk in faith with God. But not just that; he also saw trust. He also learned trust. He learned how to trust God because his father trusted God. He learned how to trust God. Not just that; he also, I think, he also learned worship because eventually, you you know, we, we also we saw Isaac, you know, you know. Worshipping God by, by, by sacrificing, you know, animals and all those things. He learned those things in, you know, in his work with God. So he learned sacrifice. But more importantly, he also learned obedience. Because at the time um, Abraham was going to sacrifice him, he was already, I think, about 16, 17 years old. And Abraham was about 17 years old. So how, how great is it that, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as if Abraham had to overpower him, to lay him down. He had he to submit himself. So it's more than, oh, my father. Now, 
His work with God has taught him submission and surrenderness. Mm -hmm. He was able to surrender himself, trusting God, having faith, not just not in his father, but in God. Because one of the things you will need in, in marriage is faith, is obedience, is, is surrender, submission. On both sides. Yes, on both sides. So if you've not learned to submit to God in it's your tough. work with God, it will be tough. Very tough. <laughs> That's why it's difficult for, for some people to submit to their spouse because they've not learned to submit to God. They've not learned to submit their own life to God. They've not learned to obey God in difficult situations. So you see, if you have not learned to, to obey God, you can't you can obey your husband. And you can't also submit to your husband. If you've not learned to love God in your work with God, you cannot learn how to love your, your wife. So that's why one of the, this is one of the reasons I said I think it's very, it's very, very fundamental that we must know God before we even go into marriage. And not just knowing God yourself, your spouse too must know God. Both of you must know God because some of us will say, oh, ah, well, I, I, I know God. The Bible said that the, the, the faith of the, unbe of the believing wife will cover the unbelieving wife. That is unbelieving when... Husband. Unbelieving husband. thank you. But that scripture is attached to when they both married as, as an unbeliever. unbeliever. Do you want to shed more light on that? <laughs> <laughs> so, when they both marry as an unbeliever, unbeliever, and along the line, the wife or the husband now, now believed. When he believed now, is uh, his or her faith can now begin to, to, you know, to cover for the other person. But when it comes to, both, before you get into marriage, you are not supposed to marry somebody who don't share your faith. So fundamental. We are not talking about being religious here. Yeah. It's not that, oh, uh, is it being religious? No, it's not about being religious. It's about the found, foundation of, of marriage. So if you have been working with God, it's impossible for you to now hook up with somebody who has not been working with God. Somebody who don't, who don't know what submission is. Somebody who don't, who don't know what obedience is. So when God is... Faith. In faith. Worship. So when God is telling you, oh, give this also amount to me, or give this house to me, or give, give this thing to me, they and you, you hear you. God, your partner is not hearing God because they have not been working with God, so there will be conflict. There will be conflict. <laughs> I remember, was it Billy Akono Akami, uh, was sharing this? He said, a particular lady came and gave a pastor the car. Gave the pastor because he said, oh, God told me to give you this car. And she gave the, 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 the car to the pastor. But the husband was not aware when she was given the car because the other husband traveled. So when the husband came, the husband, and the other was an unbeliever, the other said, where is, uh, where is this particular car? He said, oh, sorry, God told me to give the car to this social pastor. He said, are you, <laughs> are you mad? <laughs> he said, yeah, 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 where is the pastor? The husband followed the wife to the pastor's house, collected the car from the pastor. I mean, I mean that's, 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 that's a lesson for we pastors. <laughs> if, you are, if somebody if somebody who is married is giving you something, ask them, is your other spouse is he aware that you are giving this thing out? <laughs> so, but that's 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 to say that if you are not if you are if you are going to marry somebody who has not worked with God, and not just somebody who just gave his life to Christ. No, don't marry a baby in Christ. Marry somebody who is at least who is at least at, at, at even if you are you guys are not in the same realm in the spirit at least is close it's very very important so what do you think we should use our single life to do when we are single do we think we should use all our single life to pray for the uh, marriage or do you think what do we think what are the things we should we should at least achieve as as a single person before we um, we talk about going into marriage Okay, we talked about um, God. The first one we said we talked about God, yeah. and I think that in that regard, as a single person, you are. I like to see single people as um, the strongest part of God's army. Yeah. 
Like you are the forefront of God's army. So God really needs you. The kingdom of God really needs you as a single person. You don't have commitments of husband, of wife, of children, of um, dependents. You know, you, as a single person, I remember my single life. You just wake up in the morning. If I have somewhere to go, I can wake up 15 minutes soon and I will still make it. If the, person, if the place is like five minutes away. But as a married person, I would have to wake up earlier. Um, as a mom, I would have to wake up hours before. Because I have to get my daughter ready, get my husband ready. Not get you ready, I mean. <laughs> it's also that I get wives ready. Yes. Well, because most times, yeah, husbands are, are always, you know, ready before the wife, you know, gets ready. The type of wife. I'm not the type of wife to spend too much time getting ready. But the yeah, point I'm course, trying to make course. is, the point I'm trying to make is that as a single person, you have, you the, have time. the time. You can control your time. Singleness is a, it's a, it's, a, it's a gift. I think it's a gift. It's a responsibility because, like I said, you are at the forefront of God's army. And a lot of people, a lot of single people are too weighed down by, yeah. I want to marry, I want to marry the right person, I don't want to miss it in marriage. They're too weighed, bound, weighed down by that, that they miss the point. Your single life is where you now dedicate your whole entire time into the things of God. And it is when you start to dedicate your time, your skill, your resource, which is your greatest resource as a single person, is your time. And then your skill, your talents. It is when you start to give it to God as a sacrifice and as a seed that he now blesses it. And when eventually you get married, then he now establishes you in that thing. Establishes you in that thing. If you're... If you're um, if you like um, theater arts or you like drama you like to act and you decide that oh how can I use this for the gospel how can I use this for the kingdom and you start to act stuff maybe um, in church or it doesn't even have to be in church it could be maybe you start a YouTube channel you start putting out content that is pro kingdom pro gospel for the light for the kingdom sooner or later in that thing that you are doing you will find yourself, you will find who you are, you will find your calling, you will find your purpose. And that's the best way to slide and glide into marriage without stress. But if it's marriage that is on your head, I remember there was a time in my life that it was just like, I was very worried, I didn't want to make a mistake in marriage. Um, and I remember I got to a point with God where God told me, you know what, forget about it. He said, forget about it. And I, it was difficult. But then when I started to live my life for God, um, do things for God, for the kingdom, then it just happened. I kind of just glided into the whole marriage thing. I wasn't thinking about it, but I understood that, you know, this time that I had, I wish I understood it better because I would have done more. But more. yeah, that's, that's what I think. Okay. So uh, one of the things we can do in our uh, single time or single days or single season is, is learning. Is setting the foundation for our lives. Uh, because some, you know, especially some ladies are waiting for the man to set the foundation for their life. Oh, yes. I find yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Some ladies are waiting for the guy to give them the direction. Yes. No. You should have direction. You should be going already on the somewhere. journey. Yes. You should be going somewhere. Including the guy too. Both of you should be going somewhere. Not that, oh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go to, into marriage thinking, oh, you don't know what to do. You don't know which career to take. You don't know which way to go. We don't know where to live, and you're just waiting for your partner your to make that decision. To make that no, decision for you. that's a decision you should have made, yes. and you meet the person, and you discover that you you are going in the same, same direction. direction. And that's why it's it's important that you are ready on the journey. You are ready on your journey to okay. purpose, journey to fulfillment, before you make the decision of marry because. In, if you are not already on the journey, you will meet somebody who is not also on the journey. Or who is going in a different direction. Then, when you now get into it, you now discover that your journey is this way. His journey, journey is this, is this way. way. But imagine, I can only, if I'm going to Lagos, I can only meet somebody who is going to Lagos on my way to Lagos. If I'm going to Lagos, I will only meet somebody who is on his way to Lagos as I'm on my way to Lagos. So we can also both of us cannot say oh let's get to lagos together. together so it's very very important that you know you know your journey you know, you are already Where on your way going. to your journey you know it 
and you are, you are way to it, you are already doing it, you are already mastering uh, what you're supposed to do before you you now get into marriage. So the, your single season is your preparation season. Your single season is your learning season. Your single season is a season where you, you acquire the skills, the foundational skills that you need to actually live in marriage. I, I think I preached a message, I think it's on YouTube, uh, I think it's on YouTube, the three seasons of human, of human life, the, the three seasons of human life, or the season of human life. You can go and check it on my, on my YouTube ch channel, it will bless you. Because you need to know what season I, am I in. As a single person, there are things we should already, already be doing as a single person that you don't wait till you are in marriage before you start doing it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, and one, one of the things I can mention specifically is work. You must discover your work and you must already be, if you are not even doing the work right now, but you must already learning. be on your way, maybe Jeez. learning about it or doing Training. it already. As a man, you must even be doing it already. As a man, you must be doing it already. Because we know that God gave Adam work and he was already on his work. He was already naming the animals. He was already tendering the, the garden. Right. He was already doing what he was supposed to be doing before, before the woman, the woman came. came in. So I think that's very, very, very important. You must discover what's my work. And you must discover where's my garden. Where am I supposed to labor in? Where am I supposed to labor in? It's so much easier when you do those things as a single person than when you begin to discover those things in marriage. Hallelujah. So that's very, 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 very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what is there? What other thing do you think as, as a single person? I know you've mentioned about living our life for God because that's the time we can actually, you know, uh, uh, give all our time to God. But what other things do you think that we can we can use our single life to do, or things you think we should achieve in a sing as a single person before we we move into marriage? I think it's important for us to get to know ourselves. Identity. I, I, yes, get to know yourself as a single person. Get to know the things you like. Mm -hmm. Get to know the things you enjoy doing. Go out on a date with yourself. Understand what makes you angry. Understand what makes you happy. Understand what triggers you to get work done. All these things are really important. As a single person, it's extremely important because sometimes for the good ones um, that don't go to club, that don't party, somebody like me, I, you know, my whole journey was a triangle from school to home to church, school, home, church, school, home, church. Um, and they never get, I, I, you just never get to explore yourself and see, what else do I like to do? Can I join a club? Can I volunteer in a foundation? Can I do, what can I do? You know, you don't get to explore that because your life is so segmented and you just live like that in that triangle. And by the time you get married, you just keep feeling, and that's why people have mid midlife crisis. Because you just, like, like there's something, something, yeah. I'm missing something, I'm missing out on something, and then you just, maybe 35, 40, most people have it at 40 years, you know, at 40 you just feel like I'm missing out, and then you tell your spouse, can we just separate for a little bit, yeah. um, I just want to discover myself, that's what you should have been doing when you're single, when you're single that, so that's... when you're single, if you like, if you like ice skating, go and ice skate, if you like skydiving, if you like diving off of a helicopter, go and do it, if you like taking care of animals, go and volunteer, that is when to discover yourself. That's what I would say. All right. I think let me just say maybe one or two things about that identity. Uh, one of the reasons why people have crisis in, in, you know, in marriage is because of identity crisis. Because they don't know who they are. They are. Your single season is a time when you should be discovering <clears throat> who you are. Not just who you are in Christ, but who you are as a person. person. It's the time for you to discover your personality trait. Whether you are you are somebody who is angry, whether you get angry easily, that's the time to work on it. What makes you happy, what makes you sad, that's the time to work on it. 
So I think the, 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 your single time, your single life rather, is the time when you discover who am I really? Who, who is Juwan Olabi? Who is Lade Olabi? Before you join your name to Olabi, who is Lade King? Lade King! <laughs> so you, that's the time you, you, you discover yourself because actually you don't find your identity in marriage. Yes! Your identity is not in marriage. Your identity is still in yourself. And that's why as individuals, even in marriage, we still have that identity. Singleness. You still have that identity. You, if, I mean, your history is still your history. So you need to discover, who am I really? Who am I? I mean, what can I do? What are my abilities? What are my, what are my attitudes? What are my attributes? What are the things that are peripheral to me? What are the things that are core to me? What are my values? What are my belief systems? So the, the single life, yeah, the single life is a time to answer that question of who are you? Is the time to answer who? See, if you can't answer that, that, that uh, question, uh, question as a single person, don't go into marriage. Yeah, so... Some of us, we can't be with ourselves. Exactly, like how do you expect somebody I mean, else to yeah. enjoy your company if you don't enjoy your own company? If you're a replicate of yourself in the opposite side, some of you could not marry yourself. <laughs> yeah, so if you would not marry yourself, why, uh, why on earth would you think somebody else, else, marry else will marry, you? marry yeah. you? Some of us, we are not comfortable with ourselves. Some of us, we can't agree with ourselves. So we still have this great conflict with ourselves. We are still we we still struggle with oh, oh, am I this am I that what am I created to do who am I when you still struggle with that you are going to just make your spouse to be confused because if you are confused about yourself when you are single when you are married it's not only you that will be confused now your <laughs> your spouse will also be confused. Because you now be saying, ah, who are, so who is? Because let me tell you something about when you don't know who you are. See, when you don't know who you are, you take the you, you take the identity anybody. of your crisis. Mm. When you don't know who you are, you will always take the identity of your crisis. Christ. So you see, you will always oscillate with crisis. Mm. During the times when you don't have money, you take the you take the identity of of a of a poor. Uh, uh, financial, financially challenged person. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. When you, when, you, when you cheat from financial challenges to another challenge, you take the identity of that challenge. So you always define yourself with your challenge. And you see, that will create a, a, a big crisis for your spouse because he doesn't even, I mean, he tries to solve your, your, your identity by crisis. So after solving one problem, when another problem rises, he has to solve that problem. So because you, don't, you end up just not even knowing who you are. Because what you are supposed to do is that you know who you are and you are supposed to stand on who you are That's despite the, the situation or circumstances. So you see some of these things, when we take care of some of these problems, we have less prayer to, to do in marriage. <laughs> you have less mountains to climb when you are married. You have less prophets to visit when you are married because these things we they settle so much thing that we don't we can't even you, we can't overemphasize it so you see marriage is a magnifier of your single crisis your singleness crisis marriage only magnifies either your 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 singleness crisis or your singleness blessing Yes, the work you put in when you are, it's just like building a house. What you do, there's a foundation. So your, the marriage is the foundation. The, the singleness is the foundation. foundation. And it, the marriage is just like building the, the building. Structure. The structure. So it doesn't matter how beautiful the structure is. The foundation is. If the foundation, for instance, if you have a, 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 a one billion naira wedding, that's a beautiful structure. I mean, you have, you have, you have a beautiful picture. Of your wedding album, but you can't look at it in the next in another one month, three months. Why? Because it wouldn't matter how many how many billions you spend upon the structure. If the foundation is faulty, 
it will still crumble. When you have bad attitude, this is the time to settle it. This is the time to settle it. Oh, I can't, I didn't know how to spend money. Well, I will marry somebody who knows how to spend money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about you marry somebody who don't know how to spend money? <laughs> I remember, I don't know if the person will be watching this, but I will say, I will give it uh, anyway. <laughs> I will not mention the name of the person so you won't know who I'm talking about. When I was in, in a college, I used to, you know, I used to serve, we serve in different places, so I used to serve in a particular lecturer's house. And I remember um, going to that lecturer, that, le- that, that, that man is so dirty. He's very, very dirty. He's a very dirty person. So, <laughs> I'm going to share it. I'm already sharing it. <laughs> so, I, I was now saying, I remember when I, you know, when I go to, the, to, the, to the, his room, his shoe will be somewhere there. Not just the shoes, the kitchen will be on. Everywhere is like, I'm, I'm dirty. I don't mean, I mean, I'm not a clean, I'm not a very, very clean person. But this person, the house will be smelling, stinking. And I used to hope that, oh, well, well, he, when he gets married, because he was single then. So I would say, when he gets married, he will, I mean, he will change. His wife will help him. Unfortunately, he got married. And, <laughs> as a Sunday. And unfortunately, I was still serving in his house. I think I still served in his house when after he got married. And unfortunately, the wife was, wasn't any different from him. <laughs> I remember when I go to the house, I can't breathe. I cannot breathe. I like I want to hold my breath and quickly leave the house. They, be, they, be, they became so dirty that man, you can't even you can't you can't sit with him because you'll be smelling. So I was, I was hoping, and I, I'm sure he was hoping too, that when he, you know, by the time I get married, oh, my wife will clean the house. But unfortunately for him, <laughs> on Sunday he says he's coming for me. All right, <laughs> no problem. So unfortunately for him, he got married, and the wife wasn't any different. Imagine if both of them have worked on that area of weakness, of weakness before, before they got married, they would have both come together and help themselves but now they are both in marriage and they are both not clean you imagine how their children will be anyway so hallelujah praise the lord now the, the moral of the lesson is not for you to start asking me who is the person who is that lecturer now the moral of the person of the lesson is that we the our single life is an opportunity to work on our weaknesses that's the time to work on that because the weaknesses you don't conquer when you are single, you are not likely to conquer it when you are married. The weaknesses you don't conquer when you are single, you will likely not be able to, you, you will not be able to conquer it, most likely. I won't, I, I'm not saying factual that you won't yeah. be able to conquer it, but you will most probably not be able to conquer it when you are married. Because when you are married, one, you don't, now you don't have the time. You used to think you have the, you don't have time when you were single. But when you are married, <laughs> you will not have the time. You used to think, oh, I have the money when you are uh, single. But when you are married, you know that you don't have the resources. You know that you, don't, you need to manage more. So your single seasons are seasons to work on your weaknesses. Don't say, my wife will compliment me. Don't say, oh, my weakness will be the strength of my wife. Wow, the time is gone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Time is gone because we started late. Hallelujah. So, don't say that my wife or my husband will compliment me. Work on your weakness. Don't wait. Don't wait. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining. Can we just pray? I just For, for those who are singles, this yeah. is, um, we're going to pray. And for those who are, who are in marriage, marriage. Re- already, the key, the, the solution is, is to still become single. And you don't have to be separated to be single. You don't have to say, oh, let's go a separate way. I want to go and be single. <laughs> no, no, no. You can still become, maintain that singleness even when you are in marriage. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So I want us to just begin to thank God for this word that he has. I, I mean, this word is a deliverance for someone. It's a deliverance for someone. It's, it's a message that somebody needs for their marriage to work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's just begin to thank God for the, for the word he sent to us. And I want us to, to, to tell the Lord that, Father, help me 
to, to discover my singleness. Help me to really be single. Help me to work on myself in the name of Jesus. Help me to work on myself in the name of Jesus. Help me to discover my identity. Help me to work on my identity as a single person. Help me to work on my identity. Help me to discover myself in the name of Jesus. Help me to discover myself in the name of Jesus. One of the major crises in marriage is lack of identity, the problem of identity. People don't know themselves. The husband don't, doesn't know himself. The wife doesn't know herself. Father, help me to discover my identity. Even in marriage, if you are married, help me to discover who I am. In the name of Jesus, help me to discover my purpose. Help me to walk in my purpose. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray. If you're already married, Father, help me. Help me to walk on myself. 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 We are going to, we are going to pray for all single guys there, all single ladies there who are believing God for a life partner. But Father, we decree in the name of Jesus they will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, every single person around us in our church, in our families, watching us right now, we decree in the name of Jesus that you will not miss it in marriage. You will not miss it in marriage. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss it in marriage. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will lead you into marriage. The Lord will lead you to make the right choice. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will make you the right choice. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray as a single person. Father, make me the right person. Make me the right person. Make me the right person. Help me to become the right person, the right person in marriage. In the name of Jesus, help me to be right. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Tomorrow we'll be spending more time in prayers. Today we'll just say, let's lay that foundation of singleness. And tomorrow we'll continue. That, 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 that for the next six days, we are fighting for our marriage. We are, we know that every marriage at the vat of brokenness, they will come back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every marriage at the vat of separation or divorce, the Lord will intervene in the name of Jesus. Amen. And every marriage who is already divorced, who is already, who is already, that is already broken already, we decree that after these six days, God will begin to mend it and bring them back together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because it is never the will of God for divorce. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to our Holy Communion service right now. Please get your bread. If you have not gotten your bread, get your bread and your wine already. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please get your Holy Communion uh, uh, apparatus ready. We are reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the, after the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do, sh you do remember, you do show the Lord's death till it comes. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Our prayer is just, Father, intervene in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Father, intervene in my marriage. In the name of Jesus, Koraba Shito no Bahanda Banamana Monosa Lekata Gabra Nama Lebo Zuza Balish Ekoto Zobora Badi Alabahanda Namana Mosh Ebrete Lebrete Gabara Namana Mando Zubalabos. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful time in your presence. We thank you for your word that has come for everyone watching tonight. 
especially for our single sisters and brothers even those of us who are already married we pray oh god that you will help us to remain single continually in the name of jesus amen we ask oh god that for everyone who's single who's believing who's trusting oh god for the right partner father we pray oh god that you will give them peace of mind in the name of jesus amen you will help them to know you better to have a better walk with you in the name of jesus amen we pray oh god that you will help them to identify who they really are in the name of jesus amen we thank you for the series that has begun today we ask oh god that tomorrow will be better in the name of jesus amen, amen. More people will see this in the name of Jesus. Amen. More hearts will be stirred to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. From your servant that the word has come, I pray, O oh God, that you fill him in the name of Jesus. Amen. The oil upon his head will never run dry in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us once again. Pastor Sunday Adiola from Canada. Thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. All those who have joined us, Fagby, Terry, Rachel, God bless you. Um, uh, everyone, everyone, I, I can't mention everybody, but thank you for joining us today. Please, tomorrow, we'll be dealing more with prayer. We'll still be sharing the word together and we'll be uh, praying more. We'll be having the morning prayer again um, um, by the grace of God. We'll just be having uh, the evening prayers. Please, let's share this uh, video. Let's uh, make sure we are around early. We apologize for starting late today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today again. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, in Jesus' name. So see you tomorrow. Amen. And God bless you.